Okay, this will be an example of solving a rational equation. We'll walk through the entire process here. We have 7 over x minus 4 being added with 3 over x equaling negative 12 over x squared minus 4x. So hopefully as you look at this problem, kind of the first thought we have is that our denominator on the right hand side factors. Um, everybody else looked pretty simple. So if we go ahead and take that first step of factoring, then we'll be able to talk about some of the big ideas we're getting at here. So we'll leave our first two fractions the same, but again on the other side, when we see x squared minus 4x, we recognize that greatest common factor of x, and if we factor out that greatest common factor of x, we'll have just an x minus 4 left. So fairly typical rational equation problem in this class will be such that the product of two other denominators equals the third denominator. And that's pretty much what's going on here. So if we stop for a minute and talk about the domain of our equation here, it's going to be what values of x would be okay to be solutions. So all x such that x does not equal to, and if we think about this, the two quote quote bad values are going to be 0 and 4. I'll go over why that's true. The reason that's true is if I thought about this x minus 4 here, what makes x minus 4 0? Well, 4 would make that 0, so that's excluded from the domain. Similarly, what would make x 0? Well, just 0. So those are the two values that we can't use. Over here, this denominator piece says the same thing, so nothing, nothing new from that guy there. All right, so if that's our domain, I guess we'll also write down, just in case it's not clear what our LCD is, I've kind of been saying it, but it's basically just the x times the x minus 4 piece. We can make every fraction here in this equation look that way. So that's what we're shooting for. Notice that the domain and the LCD are very much connected. Um, what makes this guy 0? What makes that guy 0? So there's a connection there. But back to our solving process, we now need to bring every fraction up to having that common denominator. So for this next step, I'm going to give a little bit more room. And we will show introducing something to each piece so that each piece has the common denominator. As I'm writing, just note that the right-hand side already has the common denominator, so he won't be changing at all. But on the left-hand side of the equal sign, our first fraction, which has the x minus 4 piece, still needs the factor of x. And the second fraction, which has the x, needs the x minus 4. So now we're giving each piece what it needs. And this is where the fun part happens. Uh, we talked about the official reason why this happens, but we're able to eliminate the denominators. Basically what's happening at this next step is I'm multiplying the entire equation by that common denominator, which just clears it out. If I write what's left, it looks like in this case we'll have a linear equation. So I'll just grab what's left here. I have a 7x coming from the first fraction. As I distribute with the second fraction, I will find a 3x and a negative 12. And that's just equal now to negative 12. So this equation is linear. There are no x squared terms, so it's not quadratic. So I just need to get x alone. It looks like I'm going to be combining like terms, adding 12, and then dividing in a moment. So we'll solve that. Let's see, let's see if we can get some more space here. Okay, so I'll collect my like terms. Looks like we have just a 10x. And we said we're going to add 12 to the other side. So just doing some nice linear equation work here. At this point we find that 10x is equal to 0. Dividing by 10, we still just have x equaling 0. So our apparent solution to the equation is 0. Um, but remember, anytime you're solving a rational equation, we must consider how the domain feels about the solution we just got. So if I run back up to where we had our domain, let me pick on this for a second. Our domain said all x are good except for x equaling 0 or 4. 
and then we come down to where we solved and we just found x is 0. So my final conclusion to this problem is actually going to be there's no solution. The domain says I can't use the 0 I just found. So no value of x would make that equation true. If you like, you could also use the empty set to notate no solution. So that's one example. Um, hopefully that helps, and keep practicing with the process.